Hello and welcome to Newsweek, the New Culture Forum's look at the weekly news agenda. I am joined, as usual, I'm pleased to say, by senior fellow Rafe Hadelman Koo, historian and royal commentator, and Dr. Philip Gisley from Leeds University, also a senior fellow, as you well know by now. Um, we're going to be talking about the events in France. We haven't really actually covered that, and it is of extraordinary importance, I think, possibly even to this country in the future. Mm. Um, and also, um, hold on to your bank accounts, because we're going to also be talking a bit about that. Um, far more importantly, I think, at the moment, with France, uh, the situation appears to be at least stable at the moment. Did you at any point over the past week actually think we were seeing something a bit more than just riots? Right. Well, I remember the 2011 riots that mm. we had in London where mm. also it, it seemed as if things were going to just, uh, the conflagration was going to spread ever wider and it suddenly came to an end. We've seen in France much worse riots than we had in 2011. These were particularly bad, but France has a long history of, of rioting, not just of, of ethnic populations. Mm. The French are revolting as the, as the old adage <laughs> goes. The British like to queue, the French traditionally riot. I've often said, you know, countries that are born out of revolution tend to have a more aggressive, violent character. So if you compare America to Canada, for example, one was a country of evolution, one of revolution. Mm. You look at gun crime rates and so forth. Mm. And again, if you compare Britain and France, Britain doesn't have that revolutionary history. That's why we don't seem to have the same sort of uh, issues here yet because for example uh, interestingly London and Paris both have 15% Muslim populations mm. and the foreign-born population of London in 2011 was double what you have in Paris mm. and yet remarkably because of the British character I think we haven't actually experienced yet the strife that we see we, we, we see in France but of course when you have one million gross migration per year mm. one has to ask how long it will be before mm. we begin to see uh, strife and tension increasing here to those levels so I wasn't expecting things yet to get out to get so out of hand that it will become mm. a greater national emergency than it was but I certainly wouldn't be surprised in, in the in the near future if it does become much bigger mm. yeah I mean I, I wasn't surprised um, because I, I well I haven't been to France for, for a, a good few years but I and I know someone who's just come back from Paris and she was saying it's just a dreadful place now it's you know dreadful it's place. filthy the, the place mm. is filthy for a start um, it's chaotic um, and as you say you know the, the it, it 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 felt to me as, as I was uh, reading some of the uh, some of the media around it and, and, and watching some of the footage it just felt like complete social breakdown it felt like the you know the the French culture doesn't really exist in some of those places in some of those ghettos mm -hmm. it isn't a French culture at all it's a you know it's a it's a third world medieval culture that mm -hmm. that is hell-bent on revenge really on 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 the on the colonial you know on the uh, colonizer I suppose so it's that old story and it's very very frightening because you can't help I know there's a as you say it's the difference in, in terms of um, countries between evolution and revolution you know it's the small c conservative tradition that we've got versus the revolutionary tradition that France has got even so the the uh, you know the uh, the immigration figures that you've just talked about I can see it coming here you know long yeah, hot yeah, summer long hot summer who knows it's yeah. also a sad indictment of the whole the French greats you know like to celebrate the fact that they're a secular culture mm. but it just goes mm. to show that that may be true on paper and you know we've always applauded attempts to say ban the burqa mm. uh, and the burkini on the beaches of France mm. for example mm. as, as a great stand for mm. secularism mm. but that's had no effect deeper down mm. when you get into these ghettos when you mm. get into these suburbs mm. where you have parallel societies existing mm. completely um, disconnected from mainstream French exactly. culture exactly. but it's not I mean is it uh, are we are we uh, uh, to be quite correct it, is it right to say that the rioters are mostly Muslim I mean it seems to be that it's not quite just a Muslim thing isn't that right? There are radicals in there too. There's a kind of French antifa. Yeah, you know. Yes, there is. But I, th I think originally it comes. I'm from not trying the, to take away from it. No, I, th I think originally it comes from the North African, you mm, know, Algerian mm. uh, population, mm. doesn't it? And I think the 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 the, the seventeen year old boy, who was um, driving illegally in a Mercedes and mm. had failed to stop when the police, you know, tried to stop him. 
um, he's he, he was of North African descent so I think it, it it's it's all connected together and it's part of the course now I mean the Antifa and the radical left and the and the anarchists are so well organized yeah. now, well orchestrated that they have basically it's almost like you know dialing 999 mm -hmm. and getting the emergency services when there's a riot these teams are ready to go wherever and they're bust in yeah and you've seen that in America you saw that in Portland and elsewhere and you're seeing it on the continent of Europe you have you know Antifa will arrive on mass Yes, and, and, and well, of course there, and the technology allows allows yeah. for that, doesn't it? We saw that in 2011 in Britain, I think, for the first time, really, when they were using blackberries in, in, at that particular time. And now the technology just completely allows for it. And of course, they could. They, they it's like are, flash mobbing, yeah. isn't it? But yeah. of a more sinister yeah. variety. Do you yeah. see? I just want to talk about the coverage of it. A lot of people uh, have seen this as a kind of, you know, absolute direct uh, comparison um, with uh, George Floyd. Mm. Um, do you think that stands up? Well, it's a it's a comparison. Is in, it in, even the point? Well, uh, no, but it, it's a comparison in the sense that this is a criminal doing something wrong, and everybody is using that as an excuse to run riot. And you know, mm. they're they're talking about social justice, and obviously, the way you deal with social injustice is to go and steal televisions mm. and and uh, 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 luxury handbags and, mm. and and all of those mm. things. Douglas Murray has just written a fantastic mm. article about this, pushing back on that whole idea of this is all about uh, racism in French society. Mm. No, I, mm. I think this is this is about opportunism. Much of it. Yeah, yeah. when you had the civil rights protests in America. America, you didn't have people trying on trainers no. <laughs> in yeah, shops yeah, to find yeah. those that or, find or, or walking away with great big widescreen you know, television. You know, the 2011 riots here that was that's you know started wasn't it by um, uh, a kid to uh, Mark Dugan yeah that's right. shot. Yeah. yeah but at the same time again you know they burned down whole kind of mm. department stores well famously the one in Croydon mm. uh, this lot have in France have burned down this beautiful library in Marseille. Mm. Well, the, one of the um, one of the interesting things about it I was reading was uh, in, in these particular areas how they've changed in terms of demographic over time, and there was a, a, a really telling little vignette where a, a, a woman who'd lived there forever, who was who was I think in her seventies or in her eighties, was just asking these these kids, these young kids, to stop, and they were just completely ignoring her and running mm. riot. And mm. I think that is, that really tells a a compelling story about change mm. and about uh, about the chaos that goes around unfettered immigration and, and the speed mm. and scale of that change as an aside it's just interesting to note as a, as a point of, of interest I mean we don't know whether it's psychological or what you know a lot of right almost all riots take place in or around August mm. 2011 mm. took place yep. in, in August this is close mm. enough to August mm. you know just as we know and we know that, that you know the the full moon has an effect mm. on certain people it does seem mm. as if the summer months are those periods when you're more likely to get the sort of uh, well, violent outcome. Well, this is what I say. You know, if we have a long hot summer, which we may well do, our August may be may be absolutely catastrophic for us. Do you know what I find the most exasperating of all is that when you turn to the mainstream media, I have to use that. We all know what I mean. Yeah. About you turn, and you sort of think they frame it in such a way that it sort of almost denies any other ele element. Yeah. I mean, for example, the article you mentioned with uh, Douglas there, mm. written by Douglas, he says, you know, French racism is not the problem, yeah. it's, it's not the thing. But it has to be, I, you know, it's either that or it's political, i.e. they're all fed up with Macron. Mm. I mean, I've, you know, in the, Sunday, in the Times you get mm. this, mm. and you sort of, you're screeching at the mm. thing, saying, don't you see it's not about that? Don't you see? Yeah, well, I mean, just just the BBC today said the French riots were, were caused by dis by racial discrimination, and mm -hmm. so you know, excuse me, it's it's interesting, isn't it, how uh, p people get so irate and start to, to riot over the over the um, the shooting of a criminal. Mm. Um, whereas, where where are the great riots when when these illegal migrants rape and murder yeah, exactly. mm. people in the indigenous population? Suddenly, there's a great silence, mm. you know. As mm. Douglas Murray said, I think in this article, where has Stella Creasy? Where are um, mm. where are all these mm. typical voices when you see young women being mm. raped by by immigrants, and yet they're so keen to talk about misogyny in society on all other cases? But every time you see these stories, I just I just 
as a matter of course, I don't believe anything I read. So for example, there's been a story today about a car plowing into a, a, a primary school in, in Wimbledon. And mm. I thought, all oh, right, okay, what's what's happening with mm. this then? I think I messaged mm. you, you know, this is gonna be one to watch. And then a couple of hours later, it said, well, the police are saying this is definitely not a terror incident. And I find myself mm. thinking, really? Really? Mm. Is it mm. not? What, what does a terror incident mean? How are they framing a terror incident mm. now? Mm. You know, it might well not be, but the point is, and I'm sure all of our viewers w would think the same, I don't believe anything I read mm. in the mainstream media. Well, and know, that's yeah. even in the conservative, you know, things like the Telegraph. Oh, I, I think there's say. no difference really. Yeah. Interestingly, actually, you, you talk about the difference between uh, France and Britain, which is largely there, but there was a piece in the Telegraph today by Charlotte Gill talking about how she's so concerned about uh, the apathy in this country. And I'm just wondering whether in fact that is a big part of our response. You know, when you say the, the French riot and the, the English, you know, OQ and blah, blah. I'm just wondering whether people look at this and they just accept it now mm. as part of life. I mean, I think I think I think people are just so fatigued with this whole very formulaic response, mm. which tends to go on on two levels, doesn't it? One, it's don't look back in anger. You know, mm. when something mm. terrible happens, it's okay for the rioters to, to to look back, forward, and sideways in anger. But we are not allowed to look back in anger when there's an Islamist atrocity mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. and the second response to that is always the same thing and it's worry about an extreme right-wing reaction mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. which never happens mm -hmm. you know and and what they you know how they define uh, far right it's not extremists they always call it far right isn't it mm -hmm. it's people just being quite rightly up in arms about atrocity yeah, you know? yeah. so it's always those two things and it's People are just sick and tired of that response from the media. Do you do you remember a few years ago? I mean, France has really had it in the neck mm. hasn't it, for years. If you, you remember the um, the Bataclan, uh, it's the Bataclan Club, you know the massacre there. Mm. That time in Paris, 2015, roundabout, I think, 2017, to you know priests getting their kind of you know yeah, yeah. throats slit. And obviously, also um, Francois Paté, yeah, yeah. Um, who was the guy, the teacher, who was uh, beheaded, and, and Charlie Hebdo, and, and Charlie, Charlie Hebdo, Hebdo, of course, just, yeah. just had it, you know, mm. and, and and yet you sort of hear, of course, still in all of those cases, I bet they it would have been the French who basically were blamed, wouldn't you, wouldn't you say, you know, for their attitude, for mm. their lack of inclusivity mm. we're very inclusive here right? i mean do you think that anything like that could actually happen here yes like of course i, I mean on that yeah. scale what it happened, well of course remember we did have the beheading of lee rigby for yeah. example yeah, yeah, didn't yeah, we yeah, yeah. um we've seen the the, the stabbing of salman rushdie in, yeah. in, in, mm. in america very mm. you know it won't take much for some sort of similar thing to happen here. Mm. The fact that it hasn't happened hitherto is something of a miracle. And mm. again, mm. a testament to our natural small C mm. culture. Mm. Um, but I think it's also this idea, I think, that people have that, fr that, fr that French, the French nation is particularly hostile mm. to, uh, to, to Muslims. I think there's also that idea, which is why perhaps it provokes mm. a stronger reaction. Mm. Mm. But also they have, well, yes, antipathy may be, but at the same time, they also have a much stronger sense of their own culture still. Mm. And a, a, a stronger sense of country as well. Yes. Like France is yeah. very important to them, yeah. isn't there? Uh, and, it's, and it breaks my heart that we, we don't have that. We seem to have lost that in the mainstream. Well, it's interesting, isn't it, to contrast woke culture here mm. with France, right? We still have a very macho culture, for example, in, in France compared mm. to here. Yes. And a lot of the woke issues we battle with, you don't find in France. Mm. Mm. And it may be very well, as you're saying, it's not just antipathy. Uh, being antipathy, it could be just the general undermining of our culture yeah. mm. uh, that um, uh, those you know r r radical elements don't feel that there's any need to have a, an uprising mm. because everything is being eroded so quickly. They yeah. just need to wait, yeah. and eventually mm. they will just naturally take over. And they well, I'm they just won't I do go along with I, that. I, I, I don't think they're aware of, of of what British culture is because it's been hidden and and 
and disconnect it all of the particular elements are disconnected so much that you can't put it together as a whole and identify what it is if if you haven't lived here all your life if if you're not part of of, of the broader culture um if, you, if you're an immigrant it's very difficult to say i mean for, mm. for for young people especially it's very difficult to say you know what does it mean to be british mm, mm. you know they won't talk about the common law they won't talk about democracy they won't talk about the monarchy and all of those mm. things they'll talk about inclusion and and mm. and, a, and, a, and a good em attitude towards the environment so it isn't very clear to these people anyway what it means to be British oh uh, I, I think they've got absolutely no idea yeah. no idea and that, that's been completely uh, <coughs> I think intentional um, moving right back home to something which uh, sounds like a small thing actually it's really uh, really concerning and that's this bank balance mm. bank account business obviously as you know it started by Nigel Farage going on um, a monologue I think it was on GB News wasn't mm. it or first of all it was on his own channel uh, talking about the fact that he had been sort of effectively cancelled when it came to banking and um, suggesting that he might even have to leave the country but then as a result of that a few more cases are coming out mm. aren't they mm. I mean you know it's interesting is it not how it's always it's always one side of the political argument that's having this isn't mm. it yeah i mean the the particular bank he's talking about i don't know whether he's he's named them but i know who it is i think most people do well, he's know named it, it as well yeah but uh yeah. interesting uh, someone uh showed a, an image of their great big front window and it's just one great big pride flag yeah yeah yes. and so <laughs> you know poor nigel yeah they, they're just going to mm. cancel him but it's it's so frightening it's incredibly mm. frightening this idea that you know the the currency we're dealing with now is actually politics yeah you know and and you're either in the black or the red depending on whether you're left or right and that it's such a bizarre place to be and don't forget now cash is is leaving you know we, yeah. we're, we don't, we're not using cash anymore we are completely beholden mm. to these institutions which are essentially out to get us yeah. and that's why this is really I think the most powerful weapon in the woke arsenal yeah the ability mm. to take away your bank account yes. because you cease to have any any sense of agency in life yes. when you don't have a bank it's the account. ultimate weapon isn't yes it? there's nothing yeah. you can do and that's why uh, um, uh, Farage was thinking that he may have to leave the country mm. because of that it's extremely powerful and Coots you know let's remember <laughs> Coots is the banker to the royal family yes. mm. uh, Coots was the most traditional small c conservative institution and when they are um, trying to use this pep uh, mm. um, reason to pep being politically exposed person Persons, yeah. which is uh, increasingly being used again mm. very Orwellian type of way in which to exclude those people with it's, which you don't want to do business I just could just, just coming back to that image of Coots and, 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 and being festooned with with pride colors it's difficult to think of a, a more a potent image of, of, of a, a, an institution being captured Mm. It really does sum it up. But uh, that was uh, there was a far more, I think, far more worrying case because if you kind of say this is because they're politically exposed people, fine. But there was the case of the vicar who just simply yep. wrote to his branch saying, "I went in. Why are there all these LGBTQ plus 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 progress pride flags?" Mm. And uh, essentially wasn't his bank yes and he was and he, he had been asked for feedback you know you mm. get these emails mm. from the bank how are we doing and yeah. he chose to put this and having requested this in input they then proceed to remove his account and that's important because if you watch the mainstream media now and we had Simon Jack the mm. BBC business editor mm. coming up with this outrageous basically acting as a PR agent for Coots mm. saying that oh the requirement to have a bank account is that you have to have uh, one million pound mm. in, in, in cash mm. with us or three million pounds mm. of investment and mm. he didn't maintain that well I'm sorry I know from personal experience people with accounts at Coots and Hoare and Drummers and Flemings that's not a requirement mm. there is huge discretion that's mm. employed here and yet, and yet you would have thought Simon Jack would have actually done some due diligence mm. and found some bank mm. hold account holders who have now thankfully come forward to show no this is absolutely was a political mm. decision made by the bank and yet none of that's been given any airtime in the by the mainstream media it's, it's very interesting sorry because 
Well, it used to say, I've heard that one, you have to have a million quid in the bank account. But the Queen Mother apparently had an overdraft of about four million <laughs> <laughs> at that bank, you know. It just, it just represents everything that's happening in, in, in so many companies, you know, where uh, companies routinely say now, if you don't share our values, we don't want your business, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. and our values are, are, are this very rigid ideology, which usually revolves around trans um, LGBTQI plus stuff uh, and the environment and, 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 you know, hugely contested stuff. And, and if you don't, if you don't follow in lockstep with all of those dictates, then, then you're, you're, you know, you're a non-person. Yeah. And it brings us ever closer to this social credit society, which, which, it does. which I'm yeah. sh absolutely sure in I all know we, we agree on this, you know, it may be a decade, if not less <coughs> ahead. Many of our viewers, I'm sure, will be familiar with the Black Mirror television mm. series, which had an mm. entire episode based on this mm. social credit system, which I is already that one. Actually, it's yeah. a, well, there was a, a sort of a, 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 a paradise in America, mm. an, idyll an idyllic town yeah. where everybody was too scared to um, drop any litter or to not to smile at somebody as they passed by, so they had to have these false smiles, mm. lest anyone give them a thumbs down or oh. a, yeah. and everything was based on that sort of Uber rating out of five stars, where are you and you'll be denied access to certain places or to getting a mortgage you know and mm. of course here we are this, that was about four or five years ago yeah. and we are inching ever closer to that and it does actually exist currently in China yes it, it does well, I mean, I'm just for, for all of this um, uh, paraphernalia we've just come out of, of Pride Month and and and, and the shops where I live, uh, it's a it's a particularly right on kind of place, and all of the, even the Aldi, you know, has a great big shrine full of balloons mm -hmm. and and you know and signs all over the door. It's just it's just like walking into a dystopian nightmare, even when you're walking into a budget. Supermarket. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre. I should probably just explain what social credit system means. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you don't hold, if you don't hold the right views, yeah. or debiting. you act in an antisocial manner, mm. be that dropping litter or being grumpy or so forth, you will be downgraded by by your by your neighbours mm. or your by your shop owners or by your bank uh, mm. holder or by your Uber driver. Mm. Uh, as to and, and the lower you go down, the, the fewer privileges you have. And this is a means for China mm. to enforce its control yeah. over yeah. society. But also the practical. For most people, the practical uh, result of it's going to be you go to get a ticket, get on the train, and you will be refused a ticket because you didn't pay your mortgage. Yes. So we, that is this totally out of your hands, mm. which is what this bank thing But it could even saying. be tied to what you've posted onto Twitter, mm. what, yes, what, the yes. views that you've espoused, mm. uh, you know, yeah. things like that. And, there'll be, and of course, with facial recognition, mm. it will also be, have you attended events you shouldn't have attended? Yes. This is how it's being used in China. Well, it comes back to this, this idea of uh, the post-revolutionary society that we live in. We mm. have a, com this is the antithesis of what it means to be British. Mm. And yet it's, it's derry right through, uh, right through commerce, right through the institutions, right through education. We, we live in this post-revolutionary society and it's extremely frightening. Uh, well, as we know from the number of people in the country who are still willing to go into a lockdown if needed, what it means to be British is no longer what we thought no, it meant. No, no. People don't cherish those freedoms any longer. Mm. Is it actually a majority? I think it's, yes, yeah, absolutely it's I a majority. I think it's a majority of people who would do it again. And, and you, you, you know, you're hearing people talk about actually it will happen again. It might even be to do with the climate this time yeah. or something like that. It, well, you know, we're, you know, we talk about 15 minute cities and all the rest of it. It's all part of the same thing, yeah. isn't it? Speaking of, you know, just uh, finally, uh, I do think I would like to mention this, uh, what seemed to be like a peak of, of, well, sickness actually. This week was this woman, or trans woman, uh, who basically was in an ITV uh, yeah. news segment, put th there as being a kind of typical mum and everything. Then yeah. emerged onto that she wasn't a typical mum; she was a trans woman, etc. Then there was, this person put up a picture of, you know, herself supposedly breastfeeding. A child. A child. Yeah. Uh, I don't quite know what that means, and that whether in fact it was being induced and so or what. However, it was, but it was a particularly dystopian image. 
it, yeah, because you, because that was ITV's representation of the struggling mother. I, but it added yeah. to that, this person's Instagram account was full of images with him trying on nipple clamps in sex shops and mm. saying, you know, I, I, I want these to really pull, uh, juxtaposed to having a baby sucking on his yes, nipple. Yes, I know. It's just com we it's, it's we revolting. put the picture up now, just in case you haven't seen it, if you're not on Twitter. I don't know whether it's hit the mainstream media, but, but essentially you sort of think, surely this has got to be some kind of you know, peak that we've reached here, we've crossed some kind of Rubicon or whatever, but it doesn't appear to be. No, I it mean, doesn't appear it, to it be. It doesn't appear to be. Well, it's, it's not even the beginning. Mm. <laughs> we've got yeah. much worse to come. This is simply the expansion of this ideology into the mainstream mm -hmm. now, whereby mm -hmm. something that used to be trustworthy, sitting down to watch the six o'clock or 10 o'clock news, now you're having this as being as an accepted part of mm -hmm. life. It's now been accepted by the elite establishment that this is the way things are, mm -hmm. and they are trying to indoctrinate the rest of the nation mm -hmm. by exposure. If you expose people enough to this sort of stuff, they become desensitized yeah, yeah, to yeah, it, yeah. and it becomes regular. This is just part mm -hmm. of the, of the game plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, just before we go, uh, congratulations are in order to the LGB Alliance. You might not have heard of them, but they are uh, uh, gay and lesbian, bisexual alliance who basically believe in biological sex. They believe in men and women. They believe that sex actually uh, does exist and is immutable. Um, and they were basically uh, in court because this outfit, Mermaids, which is a pro trans uh, lobbying group, basically, tried to have their charitable state has taken away from them. That would have been, or well, the end of them, actually. Mm. Um, anyway, they fought the case at great expense and they've won. Uh, so I'm very pleased because that's a setback for mermaids and the people who back them, actually. That's wonderful news. That's wonderful yeah, news. Exactly. And mermaids is itself being investigated yes. by the Charity Commission yes. for yeah. even more serious yeah. allegations. It is and, good. And, I mean, these people. And, and just to add, mermaids is about children and transitioning yes. children. Yes, it's, exactly. it's a Tavistock type it's, thing. I think it's apparently the first case of its sort. I think it's cost uh, the LGB Alliance something like a quarter of a million pounds. Wow. Um, but anyway, these people stop at nothing. So, in fact, you know, basically, well done to them, I yeah. think, don't you think? Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Anyway, on that lighter note, uh, we shall see you next time. Thanks. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.